Hello, once again. Welcome back. Uh, I've got myself a little holiday drink here, and I'm just reviewing um, some of the progress of the last week with this trading system. And uh, if you're curious about you know where this whole thing started, uh, check out the the other videos where we're doing these uh, these weekly updates on this trading system that I'm building. And so, if you want the full story, do go check it out. But just a quick summary: uh, what we did last week was just kind of touch on that I wanted to make some improvements to automating certain processes. Uh, we were in a position where I could manually run some code in a Jupyter notebook. Um, now I say manually, there's lots of functions and transforms that exist in the code base I'm using. But, um, but in terms of like, oh, I wanna predict something for this particular symbol. This is something where I would I'd really have to do it about one at a time. Uh, all the functions were kind of tailored around one specific symbol, so you could pass in a symbol that you want to do this whole process for, and then it would, uh, you know, run through all the motions of uh, for that particular symbol, pulling the data, you know, building up the features, training up a model, uh, storing that model, and then uh, pulling data from the REST API for recent history, scoring that data, and then serving up predictions like what we're looking at now. So in the past week, a lot of my time went into taking those components, you know, those those building blocks, and then building uh, additional processes around them, which makes it to where we uh, we are going to be able to just run one bulk process in a in a Jupyter notebook, and it just generates all of the um, all of the predictions for the data that I have that I have uh, labeled in my uh, code base. So without making, without getting too into the weeds about all of that, um, let's just take a look at some of the results here. And I think that this is pretty promising. I think it's to the point where in the next week, what I really want to do is say, these buy predictions are good enough for iteration, you know, 1.0. And, um, I still need to lock down the sell side of it, which can be a little bit less conservative because, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm buying first, selling second, then really it's it's all you know the the money is where where we buy right because if we buy and then the price goes up it's kind of like maybe there's a hundred different attractive sell points that are profitable but the 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 key ingredient here is where do you enter the market so that's kind of the uh, the more important thing at this point I think but anyways we we have all these. Uh, these predictions for all these different symbols. Um, and the two time frames that I'm concerned with here are one hour intervals and 30 minute intervals. And I still have a lot of data to go through and label for the one hour and 30 minute intervals. And I built up uh, in the past week as well, some more processes around uh, automatically, um, you know, as time moves forward, uh, I, I don't wanna have to manually generate each one of these files that's helping me label these data sets. I wanna automatically uh, at least, you know, tee the thing up so that I can hit it out of the park and say, oh, this point I would have bought, this point I would have uh, not bought. You know, I want to be able to make the labeling process as easy as possible. So I, I put some effort into that and that's looking really nice. And now we, we're in the situation where earlier today I just ran um, in bulk all these, um, the predictions for all the symbols that I had labeled for one hour and 30 minute time intervals. So let's just see how this is shaping up and then I'll talk about what I really wanna do for the next week. So, um, you know what, let's let's rewind that. Let's say, let me just go ahead and tell you what I wanna do in the next week. In the next week, I want to, by, by the new year, so I'm recording this on the 26th of December and just by, by the, um, you know, the 31st, I want to have uh, this, this iteration of the bot actually running, of this trading system actually running. So I want to have a, be able to deploy it, um, even if it's just local and just having it run. I want to, instead of making these predictions on the data but not actually having the system buying or selling, I want to actually start uh, running this thing and saying, okay, here's how you know we see an opportunity to buy. Um, let's actually pull the trigger on that. Let's make that transaction and then store those the details of that transaction in the um, in this BigQuery database that I'm using. And then uh, let's see if this system is as good in practice as it seems to be on paper. So just to get an idea of how good this thing actually is, 
Uh, let's take a look at some of the predictions. So right here, you're seeing that maybe in about a month's time window, on this particular time frame and symbol uh, pair, this system would only make two buys. Uh, and also keep in mind that it's not guaranteed that it's going to actually buy at these points because uh, maybe up here in, a, in this time, this kind of blind spot here where when we pull data from the REST API, it doesn't have this historical data back here. Uh, maybe the system would have made a decision to buy over here. So the reality is that this system is not going to be perfect and it could buy like uh, up here. And then for each symbol and uh, time frame combination, I'm going to have two slots available. So if it makes a bad decision up here, you know, that's fine. Well, then when we come down here, it'll still have one slot open and it will buy and then it will sell. And then eventually if this, this trade up here never gets closed, then I'm gonna have some logic in place that's going to kind of freeze that transaction potentially. Like if we go far enough out in time, I'm just gonna assume that, okay, the price is way down here now. It's not realistic for us to be standing around waiting for this thing to, uh, for the price to shoot up so we can close this sell uh, or close this trade. Let's freeze this, which ultimately just means we're introducing a new slot. Uh, so instead of just having one slot for this thing to trade on and having this this bad en entry to the market just permanently you know, hinder this thing from making more trades, we would eventually say, let's, let's put this thing in the parking lot, uh, let's bump up the number of slots this thing has to three instead of two, and then um, you know, maybe I'll have some extra logic around if, if a particular symbol and time frame combination has is getting choked up on its slots a lot, maybe uh, that's, that's one that we can kind of say, hey, I think this symbol is, is a problem child. Maybe we can make more profits if we allocate you know, resources to different symbols that aren't this one that's causing a lot of, like that tends to get choked up on the price. So, okay, we have the one hour time frame. Let's just take a quick look at it. What the 30 hour time frame predictions are coming up with. And uh, by the way, the predictions here, these are these are like like this isn't uh, making predictions on data it was trained on. This is uh, this entire time frame we're looking at. No symbol was trained on this time frame. So this is just the patterns that the XGBoost model has uh, has picked up on. It's just scoring all this data. Um, you know where where it, for example here this decision to buy the model has no knowledge of what happens after. Uh, it only knows that this particular point in time, considering what's happened before it, seems to be a, a good place to buy. So I'm pretty happy that it's it's pretty consistent about um, picking up on dips. Now, you know, it's maybe there are other dips that I would want it to pick up on, like this one over here, but um, but you know, that's something that we can iterate on. We can We can always come back, we can add more features as we go forward in time. If it's good enough to deploy, I wanna do that. You know, keep in mind a year ago, I deployed a really dumb trading system that was nowhere near as complex and sophisticated as this thing. And it was um, it was still profitable technically, but it was just a total shit show in terms of uh, buying and selling all over the place. And it would basically just buy at any given local minimum and then say, hey, uh, anytime we see a local maximum, let's ask, is this, you know, X percent profitable compared to where we bought, uh, which is, you know, fine to make a couple dollars here and there. But, uh, but really wasn't doing, having the, the results I was hoping for. So this is looking promising to me. Let's just check out some other symbols. So we have, you know, in this combination, again, pretty sparse. Uh, we're not making a whole lot of transactions, but keep in mind that, you know, if the, if the system, if when it does buy, it's a pretty decent place to buy, uh, then I'm not concerned if any given symbol and time frame isn't making like, you know, if it's only making two transactions in a month, that's actually fine if we have, you know, uh, 30 of these different symbols and two different time frames. Um, that's plenty of opportunities to be buying into the market and selling. The, the tricky thing is going to become how many resources do we allocate to a particular transaction? Because you can imagine if you only have $200 to work with, you know, what are you going to do if you have uh, 50 symbols and two time frames, you know, are you going to allow each transaction to just be $2? It seems like, uh, okay, what, you know, what are you really doing? So that's still something that we have to figure out. But anyways, let's just, uh, let's come through this, look at the, you know, the difference here. We can see that at different time frames, I just switched to the one hour time frame. Uh, this is um, making 
decisions I'm I'd be happy with. I think these are all great places to buy into that market. Okay, so let's see. We go to another symbol. Um, we're looking at the one hour time frame. Here, this one's nice, a nice buy-in. This one's questionable. Um, and then, you know, even even as we slide down, the system saying, okay, let's buy here. Maybe that one's not the best place, but I think uh, I think this is probably going to swing back up anyway. So, you know, I'm I'm fine with it making some some purchases into the market where it doesn't have an immediate way to to sell if in general where it's buying is truly a kind of dip like here we have no way of knowing you know after the fact it's easy to say oh this wasn't a great place to buy in but you never know this uh what what's happening here you know that's it's basically like you know what made this a good place to buy oh it's just that in hindsight we see that the price shot up so the thing is here, it is picking up on some kind of like leveling out of the price. And that's just happening that this thing doesn't shoot back up. That's something we have to be, we have to be able to live with. And we have to be smart about how we allocate our resources and making trades so that we can allow this to happen and then sit on this for a while and either eventually freeze this trade and open up more slots for the symbol or say, you know what, let's put this symbol in timeout for a bit and let's wait until uh, some of these open trades come to a completion before we take any more action on this. Uh, so I'm fine with this as long as in general, as long as the majority of the places we buy in are attractive. So here again, this is, uh, this is a good spot. This is more of those kind of we're going down and we're seeing these dips as we go down. In this case, this one would get choked up here. It would run out of slots to make a purchase. And again, I just have to say, you know what, I'm, I'm either going to invest time into developing features that are going to try to avoid some of these uh, buying something in this kind of pattern um, without that ruining the ability to buy some of these attractive dips. Uh, or I just have to say, you know what, on average, um, you know, or in general across all of these symbol and time frame combinations, this particular model is making good decisions. And even though this symbol gets choked up here, there are other symbols that are doing just fine. So let's just keep uh, keep exploring. In this case, this one looks like a uh, pretty terrible. Let's see what the 30 minute version is looking like. And um, yeah, I think I think in general, I'm, I'm going to try to Yeah, this looks this looks a bit better. So like in general, I think I'm I'm leaning towards the idea of at the beginning, let's see, you know, like for however many symbols and time frames we have, uh, let's multiply that by two. So we have two slots for everything. And I just want to equally distribute, you know, whatever resources I have to trade just across that that pool of, of trading. So like if we see let's say that we're trading, we turn on the system like right here and we're moving forward and we hit this spot. Well, we would buy, and instead of throwing all of our available resources into making this trade, because we don't know if this is gonna be a good entry to the market or a bad one, uh, let's just throw in that percentage that's allocated to, you know, uniformly across all of our combinations of symbols and time frames. And then, you know, maybe this one ends up selling over here and it makes like, a, you know, 7% profit or something. Okay, then you make a 7% profit on a small chunk of the portfolio. Uh, you know, nobody's, you know, we're not gonna be able to quit our day job or something for that. But over time, you know, if this thing's making more good decisions than it's making bad decisions, that value should compound. Uh, okay, so I think, you know, we'd probably get the point. Let's just take a take a look at some of these other things, um, other symbols and just get the, you know, get the feel for where is this thing buying into the market and how does it look different on a 30 minute time scale versus an hour? Like for this symbol pairing, I think I might even like the decisions on the hour better, uh, except <laughs> for the exception of this one, which would probably end up being a choked up trade that has to get frozen eventually. Um, and yeah, let's just see some of these other ones. Cube USD. Uh, okay. Even on a little downward, as the price is trending down, these are still entries that could potentially be profitable. Maybe this one less so. Now let's see if we go to all the way down. Uh, what's Litecoin doing, for example? Okay, one little buy-in, but this seems like you know if there was a valley in price, this I'd rather it be buying here than buying up here. Let's see what it looks like for the 30 minutes, uh, 30 minute interval. It buys around the same place. Okay, and uh, yeah, let's see. I don't know, 
sand, or ren. I just want to see a couple more of these things. It seems in general I'm uh, I'm pretty pretty okay with all of this. You know, there this is something I do want to invest time in the future into fixing, but uh, but at this point it's like in the in all the efforts that I've put into trying to avoid these entry points here, it seems like the problem I run into is the same thing that makes this point attractive. Well, that's like the same thing that makes this point attractive over here. And the only difference between them is, in this case, what happened after the fact is different than what happened here. And the problem is on a, with, with this model, you know, um, I'm gonna have to get real clever about having some features that somehow point to that this isn't an attractive place to buy um, if, you know, if I'm going to prevent the system from making a decision like, like these two we see here. The problem is that a lot of this stuff is hindsight. You know, you see what happens to the price and then that's what makes you conclude that this was a bad place to, to buy in. But if the price had just shot up here, you know, all of a sudden you what, what right now looks like a bad entry into the market would be like, oh, you're a genius. How'd you know how to buy here? So that's kind of why I think we have to go in the direction of saying um, there are going to be some bad entries into the market. There are going to be some good ones. And as long as the system is making a lot more good entries into the market than bad ones, then we're coming out on top. So that's my mindset right now. And um, let's just take one more look at a, another uh, random symbol pairing here. And uh, and here like we can see, okay, so some of these symbols were having only like two um, transactions, two potential trades in a, in a month. This one's having you know a lot more than that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just for the 30 minute time frame. You know, is th this one is gonna be one that chokes up the, the trading system. This one uh, would choke it up for a while. So like realistic, if, if we look at this, we don't really have these guys over here. Um, because if we had open slots, they'd get occupied over here and we'd be waiting. We'd be saying, okay, when is this thing going to get profitable again? And this one would finally have an opportunity to close itself off, you know, over here in late December. Uh, so we also have to keep that in mind. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's easy to get lost in this, like, oh, I love the decisions this system's making. But the thing is, you know, down here, when the price is relatively flat, the system has a lot less opportunity to get choked up. And so it's easier for it to be making good decisions than it is over here when, you know, times are rough. So this is probably the thing I'm gonna put the most effort into after I get the system up and running uh, to where it's automated and it's just, it's running, you know, that's version 1.0. But then version, uh, you know, 1.1, I'm really gonna be trying to visit this, um, this type of thing here and saying, are there some really nice features we can add that uh, don't rain on the parade of these guys over here, like when times are good, but that can somehow figure out, you know, this is, looking like the price is kind of going to be tumbling. Uh, now, you know, on the surface, that seems pretty simple. Like, oh, you could just have some kind of, um, some kind of regression on your, uh, your latest X number of points. I already have that as features and it's, it, I just haven't found the right way to do it, uh, to reliably detect, like, this is a downward slump you don't want to buy. Because the whole point of this thing is if there's a downward slump, you do want to buy. Like that's what makes this attractive. Yes, we were on a downward slump and then we stopped being on one. Now we're buying. You can even see here, you know, the actual price is this kind of grayed out line. And we're not actually buying at the smallest, the, the deepest dip of this thing. We're buying on local minima as defined by the smoothed function, not the actual price. Because we want to get rid of some of this noise. So yeah, we are detecting it's a relative dip and we're still buying in on that dip. But in terms of the actual price, it's already started to go up a bit by the time we buy in. Uh, anyways, I feel like I've been talking for a long time. So we already know what I'm gonna be doing for the next week. I'm going to be getting this thing into production, the first iteration uh, where we'll actually be making uh, purchases and selling um, against the Gemini exchange in real time. And so in the, the next update, I hope to be coming back with some good news on maybe having a, a couple of these transactions that have uh, actually gone through. Uh, maybe that's not that realistic because if I get this thing up and running in the next week, then it will only have been running for like a day or so by the time I record the video. So uh, we'll see though. I'm sure there'll be plenty to talk about in the next week. 
So catch you then. Hope uh, somebody out there found this interesting.